The protagonist falls down near a bookstand. A woman pushes her, aggressively asks her if it's really that hard to help her. A dialogue ensued between them. The employer asked if she could finish the manual for her and if she would have time to write it herself, to which she heard a very quiet, barely audible apology that sounded like a splash of rain in her ears. The ghostwriter picked up the scattered pages of her unfinished work, trying to save something. The boss got angry at the girl writer and hit the bookshelf harder and harder, after which she began to tell her in an aggressive tone of voice that it was the writer's job to write everything for her, and she should be infinitely grateful that it was she who published the lame writing and made it famous. Guest writer wrote a script for a game called Fairy Kingdom for Girls, in which the main character, Lily Crisper, being the second princess in the kingdom, suffers and struggles with a huge number of adversities, the anti-hero in this world is Violetta Crisper. The game's slogan was written in golden letters on the cover of the script, and it looked incredibly beautiful and inviting. The employer was delighted with the game, so she approved that the story should be sent to the competition, and sparks of enthusiasm lit up her eyes. Although the game writer did not want to send the game to the competition because it was just her hobby, the employer insisted on her point of view, assuring her that she would prepare everything necessary because she was good at it. The ghostwriter went through her notes, trying to find the perfect way to justify her work to her boss. But she did find a flaw. She didn't like the title. It was too long. Therefore, at her discretion, she shortened the name to two words. Fairy Kingdom. She deleted unnecessary letters and words like a word lady, trying to make the name more attractive. Yuri unceremoniously appropriated the script for herself and received a bunch of prizes and awards for it. The ghostwriter was burning with resentment when she saw Yuri inserting her name into the author fields. All the dreams of the young ghostwriter girl were shattered like a crystal vase, and it all became just a fragment of her memory. She felt all her hopes and creative energy shattered into thousands of small pieces around her. The ghostwriter interrupted Yuri, saying that all she had done was bring the finished text. The employer replied dismissively, telling her that the writer had just missed her chance and should have thought faster. The ghostwriter looked at Yuri in silence, fighting back tears of resentment and disappointment. Yuri continued her monologue about how she wasn't so bad after all, because she just forgot to include the real author of the story in the game, for which she sincerely apologized. As an apology for her fault, Yuri allowed the game writer to develop the game. In general, she just helps. Moreover, Yuri is better at communicating with people, so she took on the entire burden of popularity, communication with people, and management. Yuri calls herself and the ghostwriter a great team. As soon as the girl heard all this self-righteous speech from Yuri, she wanted to object to it. The employer got angry again and slammed her hand on the wall near the writer's head. Jury reiterated to the girl that she was working for her as a ghostwriter, so she should do her job without any objections and with her mouth closed. The girl wants to express her disagreement with Jury's words, but she can't, as if there is a lump in her throat and no words will come out. All this broke the writer's heart. The fairy kingdom was her work. She was tired of tolerating Yuri's actions, but she always loses her courage as soon as she starts talking to someone. After all, the girl's dream was to create a game that people would like. This is her most valuable treasure, in which she invested all of herself, cherishing it like her child. The writer realizes that the arguments with Yuri will not lead to any result, and the release date has been postponed, so the fans waiting for the sequel will have to endure more. And soon our heroine will not be able to take it anymore. After saying okay, our writer immediately stopped seeing everything. It was pitch black and there was no sound around. The girl was scared, but then she realized that she was dead, just like that, to die halfway through the journey. In her opinion, it was all bad. She had lived a worthless life, and if only she could be reborn in a world where there were no such disgusting people as Yuri. She promised herself that she would be different. Suddenly, I could see the castle, a large number of trees and bushes everywhere, and a lightly covered building among them, and then a huge castle. There were lots of sweets and fragrant tea on the table. 
When King Crispus distracted Violet by asking her what she was thinking about, he continued with a guess that Violet must be thinking about what dress she would wear to the ball tomorrow. But there was no reaction from Violetta. She just sat there without saying a word until I had to shout her name again. Finally, the girl dropped her teacup and asked out loud, Am I Violetta? The queen and the king confirmed this, adding that she is the first princess of the kingdom of Crisper. The girl is very surprised because she was reborn in her own fairy kingdom. Suddenly, the ghostwriter got excited. Violetta is the main thief in this world, and the most desirable role for her was the main character of the fairy kingdom, Lily, who is the thief's younger sister. When Violetta saw her sister, she felt the powerful aura of the main character from Lily. She looked perfect. Her beautiful clothes emphasized her figure, lots of jewelry, small details with expensive stones and patterns on the dress. A large emerald around her neck and the girl's incredible beauty made Lily unsurpassed. But this is not surprising. The ghostwriter devoted a huge amount of time to the main character, literally putting all of herself into it. Everyone liked Lily. The girl brought the game character to perfection, and she and her work partner were proud of it. Yuri was also there. Surprisingly, she also liked Lily, without any complaints. She noted that a huge amount of love and time was put into the main character of the game, for which Yuri gave them both a muffin. The ghostwriter's colleague was very happy to have such a nice little thing, but Katori herself was not happy about it because it was just a worthless attempt to establish bad relations at the expense of minimal funds. And besides, the muffin had a fly in the middle. The girl was scared. It was a terrible thank you from Yuri. She threw the muffin into the bucket with all her might. The fly that stuck to the muffin was so disgusting that Katori couldn't look at it for a second longer. Her face expressed deep disgust and disappointment as she got rid of this unpleasant gift. Katori's co-workers turned their attention to her because she had not only refused to accept Yuri's gift, but had also thrown it into the trash with all her might. This seemed strange and incomprehensible to them, and they were thinking about what exactly had caused their colleague to react this way. Jury hugged the game writer and began to apologize terribly, as if she knew exactly how much effort Katori puts into the game and how many nights she doesn't sleep to meet the deadlines and satisfy the fans. But it still turned out that her boss upset her. In fact, Jory did it on purpose, perhaps even putting the fly in the muffin herself to hit Katori in the weak spot once again and ruin her relationship with the rest of the staff. Violetta calmly replied to her sister and everyone present that she just remembered the fly incident and she didn't want to pay any more attention to it, focusing on what was more important. She sank back into her memories. How shocked Katori was when she didn't see her name on the list of authors of the script. It is impossible to even express how great her disappointment was. The only thing that made her happy at least a little bit was being allowed to work behind the scenes. She could manage the process of creating the game and make her author's dreams come true. This thought warmed her heart, even in the face of disappointment. But in fact, it was the best thing that ever happened to her. She was reborn in the world of her game, where every corner was familiar to her. As soon as this thought dawned on her, she realized that an infinitely interesting world awaited her. Where magic reigns, the most beautiful princes meet, and an incredible number of adventures she was ready to explore. And she will be able to experience all of this in the body of her sister Lily, traveling the world and fulfilling her greatest fantasies. But the next moment, Katori realized that she would not be able to live this adventure to the fullest because Violetta has a terrible temper. And it so happened that Violetta was the only person in the family who could not use magic, which made her inferior to Lily who was a master of magic. Violetta was very traumatized by this situation, and she felt inferior to Lily, who was very good at magic. Thanks to her familiarity with the story, Katori weighed up all the positive and negative aspects and realized that the story could end in a bad way. But if she does everything right, the plot will develop in a different direction, and she will be able to enjoy life to the fullest. The family noticed that Violetta was surprisingly nice today. They started asking her if she was okay. 
She answered that everything was fine, reassuring her family with her smile, but there was a secret in her heart that she did not want to reveal. Lily brings Violetta a beautiful flower that her younger sister thinks will suit her well. The color palette of the flower made it even more attractive. Violetta was pleasantly surprised, and her cheeks flushed as she took the flower in her hands. Each petal was so detailed that words could not express its beauty. But soon Violetta saw a caterpillar on the flower. She was very frightened and threw the rose to the ground as fast as she could, barely containing her disgust. Immediately, Lily rushed to the girl to apologize, assuring her sister that she did not know about her dislike of roses. She apologized sincerely and without guile. Suddenly, Lily said in her apology that she was just a bad girl, and a wicked smile flashed across her face. Katori saw how Lily's soul was taken over by Yuri. She is confused and doesn't know what to do when she sees this strange turn of events. Lily remained close to the girl's face, an evil smile never leaving her face. There was silence between them as if before a storm, and her words left Violetta at a loss. Suddenly, a handsome young man interrupted the conversation, greeting Lily and Lady Violetta. It was Prince Lance de Rosenval from the Kingdom of Fire. He looked like a real fairy tale hero, with noble features and friendly eyes. Lily quickly turned her gaze to the prince and asked him with a smile what was wrong. Lance ran to Lily as soon as he received the ring he had made. He felt lucky and his heart was beating with happiness when he took out the box that contained a gold ring of incredible beauty with a large stone and three smaller ones underneath. All of them were burgundy garnet in color, and the sun's rays intertwined endlessly in the middle of the stones, creating a magical shine. It was a ring of fire, and Lily wondered if it was meant for her. Lance knelt down on his right knee and used both hands to hold the box with the ring closer to her. The ring was created to protect its owner in critical situations. It was enchanted with fire magic that provided protection in case of danger. This way, Lance will be able to protect Lily at any time, and this thought made her incredibly happy. She thanked the prince for this wonderful gift, showing her sincere gratitude. Violetta just stood on the side, watching it all. All these factors, the castle grounds, the peak of the rose-blooming season, and the ring of fire, together with their connection caused the appearance of the black dragon, which stood before them in all its terrifying majesty. Lance, like a true protector, pulled out his fire sword and pointed it at the black dragon, saying that it had no place in his bride's castle and he would not allow it to harm him. The dragon ordered Lily to give the ring of fire, raising its huge head. A choice dialogue box appeared in front of them and there were three options. Agree, say no because it was a precious thing to her, or ask why the dragon wanted the ring. Violetta knew which option was right and wanted to warn Lily, but she chose her own option without thinking about it or reading any of them, saying that she would not give the ring back. Violetta was scared because she knew that this phrase would lead to terrible consequences, namely, the death of all her family and herself. Time was running out. She had to act quickly and thoughtfully. The black dragon released the poison into the air, but Lance did not hesitate and instantly interrupted the poison with his fire attack. Lady Violet stepped closer to the dragon and called him Prince Magus. She asked him not to kill them and explained that she knew what the ring of fire was for and that she was ready to help him. The black dragon wondered how this young lady could help him. After all, she was just a princess with balls and dresses in her head. Violetta ordered Lily to give the ring back, but her younger sister resisted, asking why she needed it. Violetta had no time to explain, so she decided to take the ring by force. At the same moment, the ring lifted in her hands, and although it was dark outside, the ring and the rose thorns began to emit light. After that, Violetta held a small flower with strange long orange-red petals. It had an interesting glow around the petals and emitted a huge amount of energy. Violetta succeeded, and at that very moment she kissed the black dragon. Even more radiance was released around the dragon and it disintegrated. As the light dissipated, it became clear that the dragon had turned into a handsome young man with dark purple hair, wearing a black robe, and a tie with a diamond around his neck. 
The boy was holding a ring in his hands. It was the first prince of the night, Magus von Nightwald. Violetta approached the prince with joy because he had regained his previous appearance. Violetta's parents were very surprised that she had lifted the curse from the boy. At that moment, the rumors about the curse became true, and all that was needed to break the curse was a ring of fire and a rose that blooms only in the royal garden. Lily didn't know that the dragon needed the ring so much, so she started apologizing because she had put everyone in danger. Lance hugged the excited princess and began to calm her down. Katori was not surprised by Yuri's behavior. The Prince of the Night grabbed Violetta and asked her how she knew how to break the curse, because only he knew. Violetta wanted to tell Majes that this world they were in was her creation, but she was unable to do so. Majes took this as a mysterious quality of Violetta and even complimented her. After that, she received a message that she had reached the fifth level of Majes's affection. Katori couldn't take her eyes off the beauty of the Prince of the Night, but it was understandable since Majes was the second most popular character in the game. She and her colleagues spent many nights working on him until they were completely satisfied with him. Lily soon decided to say hello to Majes and express her joy of meeting him, but he did not respond to her words, his face looking completely uninterested. After a short pause, Lily continued the introduction, introducing herself as Princess Lily and suggesting that he simply address her by her first name. Madge indifferently replied that he was also glad to meet her. Before the Prince of the Night can turn around, Lily continues to apologize, saying that she did it all because she didn't know anything. Magus calmly told her to forget about it. Jury enjoyed achieving her goal, and her plans somehow doubled. Lily was very unhappy with her maid and shouted at her loudly, ordering her to carry the dress. Yumina was hurriedly carrying a lavish dress for the princess, but suddenly slipped and fell right in front of her. The maid immediately began to apologize, but assured her that the dress was fine, to which Lily said nothing. Before the maid could even get up from the floor, Lily simply poured the water from her glass over her head, expressing her apology in a sarcastic tone. A moment later, the princess took care of the maid, advising her to go dry off. But to press the point, she ordered her maid to dry off in her stinking village and to do so immediately. Violetta was already heading towards the room where the ball was taking place, and her maid Rana begged her to change. The princess replied that she would go in the same red dress. Tonight's ball is held in honor of the main character, Princess Lily. She will be invited to dance by all the characters who can be dressed up. At this ball, the storyline along which Princess Lily will go will be determined. Unfortunately, Violetta will be left without a dance partner and without a lover, but she is not going to become a thief. When Violetta sees the worried maid with a wet head, she asks her what happened. The maid told her that Lady Lily had expelled her. Violetta's face was perplexed. She did not understand why Eumenots had been kicked out. She could not get her mind around it. She thought of Lily as a kind princess who empathized with people and helped them. The wave of thoughts was interrupted by the words of the expelled maid that she was leaving. Violet grabbed Yumina's hand and hugged her tightly. The princess told Yumina that from today on, the maid would work for her. And for Lily, there is no excuse. You can't bring people to such a state. Katori was very angry with Yuri's behavior in the body of her stereotypical character. She dare not do so. Rana called out to the princess because the ball is coming up and Violetta is not yet dressed, and she ordered her to behave like a real lady, to which the princess laughed. Yumina came up to apologize for getting Violetta's dress wet, but the princess said that there was no need to apologize because everything was fine and she wanted to change her dress anyway. Rana was surprised by this because the princess had told her something completely different. Violetta continued that Yumina shouldn't worry about it and shouldn't get upset. Yumina thanked her sincerely and ran to get the hairpin, and Rana asked her to take more earrings. Rana was humming a cheerful tune when Yumina asked if the rumors circulating around the castle that Princess Violetta was callous, evil, cruel, and narcissistic, and treated her servants terribly, were true. Rana replied that indeed the princess had behaved terribly until recently and had expelled a huge number of maids, 
and even Rana had gotten a little bit of a beating. But recently, she has completely changed in a different direction, and Rana wants to serve such a princess. At this time, Yumina was silent. Returning to the princess, Yumina began to comb her hair, and while doing so, the maid broke a flower made of crystal that brings good luck. At the same moment, Lily ran over to ask if the maid was hurt, and Yumina excitedly replied that she was not, but was worried about the broken flower. But Lily interrupted the maid, saying that everything was fine, and then drew attention to the beautiful sunlight that was reflected and broken into thousands of rays of different colors of the rainbow in the crystal pieces of the flower. Lily continued to admire the beauty of this phenomenon, saying that it was an incredible luck to see such a beautiful sight. When she saw it, she realized that this was the Lily she had been developing, putting her heart and soul into it. Lily was her treasure. In fact, it was her whole life. She clenched her fists against the rage that filled her. Violetta vowed to protect her precious world from jury at all costs. And so the long-awaited ball began. A lot of people gathered and everyone was quiet to listen to the king's speech. The king joyfully announced that a miracle had happened that brought their kingdom closer to their neighbors, namely the lifting of the curse on the prince of the kingdom of the night, Majes. He was just about to announce the name of the eldest princess of the kingdom when Violet interrupted his speech by opening the door and apologizing for her tardiness with a happy face. She was wearing a dark turquoise dress with a beautiful pendant. She immediately said hello. People were surprised by this appearance of the princess. The king decided to continue his speech and said that it was his favorite daughter, Violetta, who broke the curse, and now the problem of finding an heir to the throne of the Kingdom of Night is solved. The father asked Violetta what she wanted for her feet, and the daughter replied that she did not need any land or jewelry because gratitude would be enough, and the lifting of the curse was a pure accident. Yuri is as negative as ever and believes that Katori doesn't deserve anything more than that because she is just a worthless ghostwriter. The ball was beautiful, many people danced, and especially people did not give way to Princess Lily, who was drowning from so much male attention. On the other hand, people couldn't understand how Violet broke the curse. No one wanted to believe it. Everyone suspected it was some kind of deception. Although Katori didn't expect any other outcome, because she is a thief princess, everyone knows about her bad character. It was at this point in the game that Violetta poured poison into the king's glass, framing her sister Lily. Violetta planned to enslave Lily for the murder of the king and wanted to see Lily cry. But fortunately, there are other endings and plot branches, so no one will have to kill anyone, especially since they don't want to see a grimace of pain on the king's beautiful face. Violetta's sister is in the center of attention, but she can't keep up with her. Jury brings the king alcohol, saying that Violetta gave it to her. Coterie realizes that Lily wants to kill her father with poison. Violetta runs as fast as she can to stop her sister, but there are too many people, and if she doesn't make it, she will be imprisoned because she is the main thief. But Yuri can't do that because she is the main character in the story. She will ruin the whole plot and make the kingdom not fairy tale at all. Suddenly, Violetta slipped and started to fall, but she was caught by the Prince of the Night at the right moment. She asked his majesty to help her father, and Majes understood, took Violetta in his arms and merged with the flow of people. Lily brought her father some wine, and the king was about to take the first sip when Violetta asked to take a sip because she was too tired to dance. And especially the drink Lily brought, apparently it quenches thirst perfectly. Violetta drank everything in the glass, thanked her, and wanted to leave the ball as soon as possible. She approached Majes and asked him to take her outside for some fresh air. The Prince of the Night saw Violetta's eyes filled with blood. A moment later, Violetta fell to the ground, dropping the glass from her hands. Everyone in the room was shocked, especially the mages and the princess's parents. At that moment, Juri realized what a situation she had gotten herself into. Yuri is angry because she wanted to frame Katori, poison her father, and cure him with healing magic, but Violetta ruined Yuri's plan. 
Running up to her sister to check on her, Lily actually took the glass with the poison in it so that there would be no evidence against her, still considering herself much better than Katori. Prince Lance called Lily to him because it was better not to leave her alone, but the princess ignored him. The king wanted to carry Violet to the king himself, but Magus said that the princess was probably poisoned, so it was better not to move her. Everyone at the royal ball was shocked, wondering who wanted to poison the king. At that time, the royal doctor and the maid came running in. Magus asked if anyone in the king's family could use healing magic, and he replied that Lily should be next, but she hadn't yet revealed her gift. But Yuri awakened her powers even before Katori inhabited Violetta's body. Surprisingly, she managed to overcome the game barrier with a simple game manipulation. Namely, she called Violetta to the cliff and played the events necessary to awaken her powers and pushed her sister. Jury was prepared for Violetta to accuse her of having pushed Lily, but she forgot everything because she hit her head. Magus was very upset about all this, but there was nothing he could do. Yuri was beginning to feel victorious. Suddenly, Yumina came running into the room and told her that Lily had already gained the power of healing because she had healed her scratch on her hand repeatedly. Jury did not expect such a turn of events. She did not want to treat Violetta because she had only treated small wounds and scratches before, and treating her sister was not in her plans, nor was it in her plans to have her drink poison instead of her father. But Magus insisted and asked Lily to cure his sister. Lily is confused. She doesn't know what to do. Suddenly, Lance hugged Lily from behind and reassured her, promising to be there for her. Jury didn't want to treat this bastard to the last, but she couldn't argue with the others. A beautiful pink glow illuminated the entire room and struck Violetta's body like a bolt of lightning with various pink branches. The royal physician noted that her breathing and pulse returned to normal and that the poison was gone. Everyone began to praise Lily, but she decided to be modest. Lance took the girl's hand and kissed it, saying that this was Lily's and that he had never doubted her. He was so proud of his beloved. Lily sincerely thanked the Prince of the Fire Kingdom, but in her mind, Yuri was thinking about terrible things, about the missed chance to be the center of attention, why she hadn't foreseen that Katori would want to drink the poison. She also remembers the maid who dared to open her mouth when it was not necessary. Jury thinks that this is just a stupid game, and that if anyone doesn't understand it yet, she will make them realize that they shouldn't cross her path. And in the end, she will put all those idiots in their place. Yura was terribly bored, upset that the ball didn't end the way she wanted it to, and all because of that worthless poetry writer. She couldn't understand why people were so worried about her. She hadn't poured a lethal amount of poison. Watching Majas from the window, there was still something that comforted Juri, namely Katori's suffering. Juri noticed Majas, even though the prince was on Violetta's side, this could be fixed whenever she wanted, because he was still a character with a romance line, meaning she could make him her own at any time. But she decided to save that for dessert. Violetta had just woken up. She felt fine. She immediately saw two maids standing over her, Rana with the soup and Yumina with the clothes. Both of them told the princess to get up. Violet is not a fan of overprotection and thinks it is better to take a walk to relieve stress after yesterday's incident. Suddenly, she heard a knock on her room door, and she sincerely invited the guest in. It was Majes, and he was wondering why Violetta was so eager to get out of bed. The princess asked what exactly Majes wanted, but he just wanted to visit her. The prince of the night wanted to make Violetta happy, even though he didn't know what kind of flowers she liked, he picked her the ones he thought were beautiful. The girl was very pleased that the prince paid such attention to her. But she wonders why Magus didn't start coming to Lily after the ball, because according to the plot, he was supposed to fall in love with Violetta's younger sister and come to her every night. Magus began to ask why the princess had done such a rash thing, why she had drunk the poison. Violetta had nothing to say, so she said that she drank it for no reason. But the prince was only more surprised by the girl's answer, as he added that no princess would agree to such a thing. Violetta pointed to herself and said, That's the princess who would drink poison for nothing. Magus laughed sincerely, and the girl liked his smile, 
It was as sincere as a child's. She laughed a little at this, although the boy did not understand why. Majess apologized prematurely for the conversation they were about to have, and as much as he wanted to bring it up, he would have to ask the princess. He asked if Violetta wanted to cover for her sister, but the girl wanted to know why Majess thought so. After all, the one who brought the cup of poison was Princess Lily. Lance was looking for Lily in the hall that evening. Suddenly, he saw her taking the cup with her and wiping it on the curtains. And no matter how much the Prince of the Fire Kingdom looked at Lily, he could not deny the fact that it was she who wanted to poison the king. Lance didn't know what to do, because he believes Lily. But on the other hand, the thought that she wanted to poison her own father was not leaving his mind. But he knows better than anyone that Lily is not evil. Suddenly, Lance's thoughts were interrupted by Lily herself, asking if he was going to visit her older sister, and the Prince of the Fire Kingdom, of course, went as well. But Lance still couldn't get rid of this annoying thought. He believed that it was definitely a mistake, because the princess was worried about her sister and couldn't have put poison in it. When Lily saw Magus in Violetta's chambers, she suggested that they take a walk in the royal garden for a while. The prince agreed with her, his thoughts never leaving him for a moment, and he decided to check it out for himself. Juri cringed when she saw her sister's face, and she hated Katori because she always scratched her eyes. In the garden, Magus and Lily sat down in the gazebo to eat sweets and tea. Yuri kept thinking about the ghost writer because she made them both fall off the bookshelves, and they were both reborn in the world of the fairy kingdom and she thinks she was more fortunate because she was reborn as the main character, Lily. She knew the plot of the game and planned to live here like a harem, but that smelly ghostwriter always ruins everything for her. Jory didn't want to cross paths with Katori anymore, but it just so happens that they now live under the same roof. The girl is determined and wants to train the ghostwriter to work for her like in her previous life. While kissing Lance, Juri was still thinking about how she would show Katori who was boss. Lily went to the central square, where it was peaceful and pleasant to be. Children were playing on the lawn. Suddenly, Lily pulled out a bag from her suitcase with a snake in it. The princess released a green, big snake with evil red eyes right towards the children. The snake bit the boy's leg. It was poisonous, and the boy needed urgent medical attention. But then Lily came calmed the boy down and used her power to heal him. It was a very beautiful sight, with lots of golden light and rose petals flying in the air. Lily calmed the boy down and told him that he had nothing to worry about. She healed him. The boy and his mother were very grateful to the princess for her help. The girl got up and said goodbye to the people. But the boy's parents wanted to sincerely thank her for this, so they gave her two baskets filled with various vegetables, fruits, pastries, and even flowers as a token of gratitude. But the people who gathered around them began to criticize their baskets. They looked poor. Is it even possible to give such baskets to a princess? Lily said she would definitely eat these gifts, and she left. Arriving at the river, Lily and her maid threw all the gifts into the river without eating any of them, deceiving the boy's parents and breaking her promise. Lily asked the maid if she had written everything down, the maid said that she had, and showed her a picture of the boy's leg, which had been bitten by an evil snake. Lily assumed that the venom was traveling quickly through the boy's body, and how lucky she was to be there. The princess remembered the snake that the maid was supposed to catch, and she failed. Lily said in disappointment that there was nothing she could do. The maid felt relieved and thought she had been lucky. Yuri noticed that the maid breathed a sigh of relief and said in an aggressive tone that just because the snake was gone didn't mean that the experiments with poison were over. Lily opened the suitcase, which contained the same bag with the snake. Yuri's best experience was with her sister Violetta, and she learned a lot about venom and how to heal from it. With a wicked smile, the princess asked the maid to put her hand in the sack. The maid did not want to do this, and hesitated for a long time. Lily manipulatively said that she would forgive the girl if she put her hand in the bag, especially since the princess had the gift of healing, so the maid had nothing to worry about. Holding on to the last, but being in a desperate situation, the maid still unlaced the bag with the snake and stuck her hand inside. The maid was in incredible pain and called for Lily, 
but she just watched calmly and ordered the poor girl not to speak and to control her breathing, rhetorically, mockingly asking her if she was in pain. At the same time, Jury was analyzing the effect of the previous poison Violetta had taken. She was supposed to die from it, but apparently her older sister was under magical protection, which the princess hadn't thought to take into account. Thinking about the best way to break Katori, Yuri realized that ordinary poison would not control her. She had to look for the sharpshooter's weaknesses. Yuri remembered that Violetta had been unable to use magic since birth, and she needed to think more about it and how to turn Violetta's weakness against her. After much thought, Yuri was very angry because the world was mostly designed by Katori, and she was only taking away her glory. Suddenly, the snake switched from the half-dead maid to the princess and almost bit her hand. Suddenly, Violetta arrived on a strange creature. She apologized for scaring her sister. Suddenly, an idea flashed through Yuri's mind. Violetta uses magical artifacts to protect herself from curses, poisons, and other evil spirits. But artifacts can also be used to attack. The older sister saw the half-conscious maid who had been bitten by a snake and asked Lily to heal the poor girl with her magic. Lily healed the maid without much distraction. The younger sister asked the older one where she was going, and Violetta clumsily lied that she was just walking. Jury played along, saying that the weather was perfect for a walk today, but that the older one should be careful. Violetta flew away. At the same time, Jury remembered that a man who creates magical artifacts lives in the very forest where Violetta was headed. There were many rumors and legends about this forest that made her heart beat faster with curiosity and fear. Deep in the woods, behind a dense thicket of trees and hills, stands a lonely house. This house has never heard the noise of a happy family, no children playing and no women laughing. The owner of this house wore a frightening metal mask that completely covered his face, with only holes for his eyes and mouth. He helps the Wicked Witch in her plan to take over the world and creates special magical artifacts for her. Katori was sure that even for Violetta, taking over the world was too much, although maybe she did have such thoughts. She petted her adorable pet and told him to wait where he was. The man in the metal mask bowed his head before her and went down on his left knee, showing respect. The masked man spoke such gentle and beautiful compliments about Violetta's beauty as if he were a poet. He devoted his entire life to fulfilling Violetta's every wish. He was happy to welcome her back to his home. Violetta looked at him in surprise, and the masked man thought that he had not welcomed her into his home well enough. Violetta started to say no and assured him that he just needed to wait a minute. In fact, Katori was simply afraid of the man in the iron mask because he looked terrifying, even though she had made him look that way herself. But the impression was quite different. The man took an interestingly shaped magic feather, attached to a wand, with several sapphires at the connection to the feather, and held it over the girl's shoulder, for which he apologized. Through this feather, he felt the remnants of Princess Lily's healing magic. This surprised him, because Lily was supposed to receive her powers only during the season of the Savannah Flowers. Violetta completely agreed with Shiki. This event had to happen later. In the meantime, her sister's magic was already perfect. The story went completely differently than in the game. The girl is sure that it was because of their rebirth in the world of the Fairy Kingdom. Shiki threw the magic feather into the fire, removing the trace of the healing magic. The masked man warned the princess again that if the artifacts come into contact with other magic, they will behave unexpectedly and have the wrong effect on the girl's body, so she needs to be more careful. Shiki was good at his job, so he asked the princess to take off the ring so that he could recharge its energy. The girl hesitated a bit, but agreed and thanked Shiki. Violetta stood in silence while Shiki recharged the magic ring, until suddenly the girl asked if the man wanted to take off his mask. Shiki looked at the princess sadly, assuming that he had indeed met her badly. Katori did not understand why he thought so, so she asked him. The man did not hesitate to answer that the mask is not just an accessory, it is a tool that concentrates all the magical power and creates artifacts. And if the lady wants Shiki to take it off, it means she doesn't need him anymore. 
Violetta shouted excitedly that she understood and that he had misunderstood her. Shiki used to be a slave. He had great potential and an unlimited supply of magical power. Violet had seen it in him when Shiki was a child. She subjected him to countless and very cruel hard labor until there was nothing and no one left in this world for him except Violetta. He is absolutely faithful to her, and to this day he still makes magical artifacts for Violetta. In other words, it was Katori who literally put her husband in a metal mask. This made her feel sick because of Violetta's actions. Unexpectedly for everyone, Lily opened the door. Katori was very surprised because only Violetta knew the way here. Lily said that she also wanted to take a walk, so she started to follow Violetta. Out of curiosity, Lily asked what kind of place it was, and Jury found out that a personal artifact master was working in this hut. Lily couldn't have come here at this time because it was a non-game event, but she really could have met Shiki in the game. The love of the main character can free Shiki from the terrible curse of the metal mask, and he will get a good ending. But if he doesn't take off the mask, he will only get a bad ending. In the story, Violetta will punish Shiki if he speaks to another woman. But Katori just wants to free Shiki from the curse of the mask and make him free. The story writer was surprised at herself and how she ever thought of burning a man in an iron mask to death with fire. It was too cruel for her liking. And then Katori remembered that it was Yuri's idea. She was always good at coming up with bad endings for characters. Lily noticed a man in a mask and asked her sister who the gentleman was. Violet remained silent, seeing Shiki hiding under the table and asking him who hides like that. If this is how things turned out, Katori thought, she should lead her to a good ending. Violet told her sister that she hadn't introduced them yet and introduced Shiki to Lily. Lily had a bad thought, signaled by her evil smile that stayed on her face for several seconds. The princess bent down and spoke to Shiki with a smile. She was happy to meet him and introduced herself to him. Katori sincerely wanted Shiki to open up to Lily because she wanted a happy ending for him. Lily pulled Shiki's hand, urging him to show his face and not be so shy. But as soon as the man in the metal mask turned around, the only emotion on Lily's face was terror. A moment later, Lily started screaming about how ugly Shiki was and then kicked him in the head. Lily pointed out the terrible design of the mask and that it was supposed to look different. She ran away screaming and kicking and said that she would not touch such things with her hands and that she needed to wash herself after all this. The man in the stone mask was still lying there and Violetta did not know where to find a place for herself. The princess asked her subordinate if he was okay. Shiki assured Violetta not to worry about him, saying that he was just an empty place and an empty person. He doesn't care how he is treated, or if anyone talks to him at all, his heart hasn't felt pain or regret for a long time. Violetta could not stand his words and asked him not to say that. After all, Shiki is a person without whom this world cannot exist. The princess caught herself thinking that she was talking about the man in the iron mask as a game character. She touched him in the heart. Katori created each character by pouring a huge amount of effort into them and cherished them as her favorite child. But now that she was reborn in this world, they were all no longer soulless non-game characters. They were no longer code. They were each a person with their own consciousness, feelings, and thoughts. They were fully alive people. Violetta invited Shiki to the castle with her, and he was very surprised. Katori realized that even though the story was going off track. But after the awakening of Lily's healing magic, events should occur that increase the level of attachment. Shiki must attend the next ball at the castle so she can ensure a happy ending. Shiki holds his hand in the same place as Violet's, and a notification appears that Shiki has reached the second level of attachment. The king made a speech saying that although the previous ball did not end well, everything would be fine tonight. The music would make the hearts of those present sing again, and he wished everyone present to enjoy the evening. The table was laid out with many interesting appetizers, various fruit and vegetable salads, and gourmet dishes. There was a lot of beautiful ruby-colored wine playing in the light. Lily and Lance are dancing, they are in the center of the action. Everyone is delighted with this couple. They look great together, 
as if they were made for each other. The guys at the ball were arguing about who could best praise Princess Lily's smile. One said that her smile makes the world a better place. The other said that the princess's smile is more beautiful than any flower. Lance was jealous because all the boys at the ball wanted to dance with the princess. Lily replied that ever since she used healing magic on her sister, boys have been staring at her. But in reality, a princess is neither a saint nor a goddess. She can't dance well if the Lance doesn't lead her, and she has problems with etiquette. She has a lot of room for improvement to become a much better princess. Lance's face became excited. He was thinking about how Lily had been acting strangely. Even though he already had the results of the examination, which proved Lily's innocence because no residue of poison was found on the curtains. He still had doubts in his mind about all this. He knew Lily better than anyone else. She is always ready to share pain with another person. She is a beautiful girl with a sincere soul and the kindest heart in the world. She would never hurt anyone. Lance forces himself to believe the Lily he loves so much. Lily asked if something had happened to Lance, and the prince replied that nothing had happened. He was just worried that no one else would dance with the princess, and that he couldn't get the thought out of his head. Lily jokingly said that Lance was not listening to her. He laughed and offered her a drink. Violet was walking on the red carpet with a man in an iron mask. The butler was very surprised, and his face was mixed with negative emotions. He had no idea who this man was. Violetta calmed the butler down and introduced him to Shiki, although the man in the iron mask remained silent. Violet called him to come with her, but Shiki turned to the princess and said that he could not go any further with someone like him. Violet interrupted him with her apology, and the man in the iron mask did not understand what was happening. Violetta admitted that she made Shiki go through a lot of hard labor, and she realizes that this is unforgivable. It is because of the princess that Shiki's life is so terrible. He has always been in the shadows. That's why Violet wants to see Shiki happy. The masked man calmly said that this is all nonsense because he exists only to serve the princess and to be useful as often as possible. Violetta stood her ground. Shiki has to touch Lily's kindness to increase his level of attachment. The moment this happens, the curse of the metal mask will be broken and he will begin to live. Violetta is incredibly grateful to Shiki for his loyalty and service and sincerely repents for what she did to him. Soon, the metal mask shone with a blue light and the chains that bound Shiki's body and soul shattered into pieces. But Shiki's level of attachment grew to a maximum level and he was attached to Violetta. Shiki looked at Violetta in love. Evil Lily walks down the hall, stepping menacingly onto the red carpet. Many girls gathered in the hall, eager to dance with the handsome young men. Violetta entered the room with Shiki. Everyone present immediately noticed his beauty. His ash-colored hair, combined with his beautiful eyes, made him look extraordinary. One of his eyes was light blue, and the other was bright purple. Everyone wondered who this handsome young man was. Lily turned to Lance, who was also wondering who the handsome man with Violetta was. He assumed that he was a prince of some country. Lily could hardly contain her anger. Lance noticed this and asked if the princess knew this guy. The girl quickly answered, saying that she was curious about the guy herself. She wondered how her sister could hide such a handsome man. When Violetta leaves with her boyfriend, she still can't come to her senses because Shiki's mask has flown off. It was a surprise for her. Violetta is glad that her sister came because now Shiki will fall in love with her and get a good ending. Lily suggested that her sister introduce her and Lance to this young man. Violet was happy to say that this was the same artifact maker who worked for her, Shiki. Lily couldn't believe that such a beautiful face was hidden under such a scary mask. Shiki knelt down in front of the princess and kissed her dress and introduced himself, saying that they had met before. Violetta was happy because everything was going according to plan. She just needs to make the right choice. Lily is presented with a menu of choices. The first choice is that she is a little embarrassed, and the second choice is a complaint about what Shiki did. Lily needs to choose the first item where she will feel embarrassed, so that Shiki's affection will increase significantly. Violet hoped that her sister would choose the right option. But Lily hugged Shiki, 
and thanked him for protecting her sister. She expressed her boundless gratitude for his service. After that, the girl became very shy and hid behind Lance's back and leaned heavily against the man's shoulder, covering her face with a part of his clothes. After that, Violetta saw Shiki's level of affection for Lily drop to zero. Although she didn't want to give up and had another trump card to play, namely Lily's promise to Shiki, she said she would cook a slightly sweet gingerbread cookie. Violetta decided to take matters into her own hands and hoped that Lily would answer everything correctly. The girl asked her sister if she could tell her about the sweets that were at this ball. But her sister replied that she did not know anything about baking. Juri didn't want to leave Katori alone, so she asked Lance to dance with her sister. But Violet shouted that it was unnecessary and that they shouldn't worry about her because she wanted to talk to someone. Lily felt that she was right about her prediction. Violetta stood by the window thinking. She realized that she had to play the role of a thief, and as long as she was a thief, the fairy kingdom would be safe. The girl cannot dance with anyone. Everyone should forget about her. Suddenly, Yuri came into the room and asked if Katori wanted to give her the opportunity to destroy her favorite fairy kingdom world. Violetta's face paled considerably from worry. Lily began to tell her that they hadn't been able to talk to each other properly lately. Juri asked to sleep with Katori that night. Katori was waiting for Lily, and she was a little late. The sister finally came to Violetta and greeted her, apologized for her tardiness, and brought her some hot drinks as an apology. She added that she felt like a child again when she was sneaking around so that no one would notice her. Violetta looked suspiciously at the cups and what was in them, but Lily assured her that there were no insects or poison. Jury suggested that they start a pajama party and call each other by their first names, calling Katori a dear ghostwriter. Finally, after such a long time, they sat down to talk to each other. Katori didn't want to believe that Jury had taken over Lily's body, but it was true. Yuri said that she did not want to get used to the role, so she would speak directly. She told us that she was Yuri Sadzima. She died and was reborn in the body of the main character of a fairy tale kingdom named Lily. It's hard to believe, but since then she has been living as Lily. But for her, it's all very exciting and incredibly interesting. Jury asked Katori what she would say. The ghostwriter replied that it was the same for her. She was crushed by a large wardrobe and woke up in a fairy tale kingdom in Violetta's body. Jury interrupted the girl and said that was exactly what she thought. She boasted that she felt great living in Lily's body. Her skin was so soft and delicate that she didn't need to take care of her or control what she ate and drank. She also doesn't need to control the amount of food she eats because she will never gain weight. And her hair is always so soft and silky. Yura likes this character very much, so she would like to enjoy life in this world. And in order to fully enjoy it, she needs Katori to stay out of her way. The ghostwriter replied that in fact it was Yuri who was not doing everything right. She was destroying this world by changing its rules and making it change for the worse. Yura didn't care about that. She said she tried so hard to create this world. It's strange that she doesn't remember any of the storylines of any of the characters at all. It was true because Yuri just made her own little adjustments and added details depending on her whims. The girl asked the writer if she wanted Yuri to follow Lily's line and if Katori would remain a villainous princess. Yuri knew perfectly well that in order for Violetta to remain a thief, she had to not dance with anyone. And not to talk. So she invited Katori to become her shadow. The ghostwriter will tell her what choices to make and tell her about the conditions of certain events. Then Lily will be a good girl and Violetta will be an evil princess all according to the canon of the game. The girl wondered if it was really worth taking this path, and she began to remember that she had already done so in her previous life. She didn't want to find insects in her food, and if she spent time with her again, everything would go back to the way it was. But if she endured it, the fairy kingdom would be safe. So she agreed. Jury was excited and suggested they go for a walk, as soon as they got to the royal lawn, they saw Lance, covered in ice, barely breathing. Jury said she had a choice. Lance told them that the ice dragon that was supposed to be sealed had awakened. 
Yuri made the choice without thinking to get rid of Lance so she could spend more time with Shiki. After that, Lance left. Lily added that apparently fire and ice are hard to fight, so he must have come back to heal his wounds, and now he is under a tree. Lance's subordinates did not want to see him in such a bad state, so he came to the royal garden. Jory added that the healing magic didn't work. Violet shed a tear. Lance is in this state only because of Lily, and if Lance dies, there will be one missing piece for a happy ending. Violetta examined Lance, his heart barely beating, and the princess asked how long it had been since she had seen him in this state. Yuri replied that she had time to drink tea. It didn't take long. Maybe an hour, maybe more. Violetta could not believe that Lily would leave Lance in that state. She was very cruel. How could she leave the prince like that under the tree and make him freeze while she drank tea? Although she was very angry, Jury did not care about Lance's condition. She simply didn't care. Violetta's anger knew no bounds. She would never forgive this. Yuri slyly replied that Katori could certainly attack her, but then they would have a bad ending. She skillfully manipulated her advantage. Lily asked Violetta for help and said that after all this, they would go to bed safely. Violetta replied that she needed to melt the ice from the frosty breath, and for this, she needed to use a magic stone called melted ice. Violetta had a stone like this right around her neck, but it is not known whether it will help Lance because he has been in this condition for a long time. Jury told her not to tell her unnecessary information and just to do what she needed to do. Her face was full of indifference and self-confidence. The color of the Fire Prince's face was getting worse and worse each time, so Jury urged her sister to hurry. As soon as Violetta touched Lance's chest with the stone, she felt pain as if thousands of needles were piercing her palm every moment. There was no telling how long she would last like this, but suddenly Jury helped her. She began to heal Violetta's arm while she thawed Lance. They succeeded. The prince became warmer and was about to wake up. Lily took Violetta's hands and thanked her terribly. A minute later, the prince woke up, and Lily said that she had saved the boy herself thanks to the ice-melting stone. Lance saw the blood on the girl's hand and thanked her. Lily grabbed the boy and hugged him tightly, saying that she loved him. Lance asked where Lily got the stone, and Violetta quickly improvised and said that she gave it to her sister because she was whining about the prince. Violetta walked away with an indifferent look on her face, but Lance managed to see the blood on the princess's fingers. Lily did not understand why the Lance looked back at her sister, because she was the only girl he was supposed to look at. The princess said that her sister hated her and began to complain, saying that Violet had said that she wished she had never been born. Lance had a lot of questions in his head, why the thief princess had blood on her hands and why Lily decided to say all this now. Violet was watching them from behind the bushes. Violetta regrets what she said, but she has to follow in the thief's footsteps. Katori has sworn that she will make Yura's life terrible, that she will never let her be happy. And all that awaits her is a nightmare from which she will not wake up. Suddenly, she realizes that she has become a thief. The princess of the thieves' princess of thievery had a cold and piercing gaze. You need to be calm and at the same time scare people with your gaze until they get goosebumps. Shiki thought the princess was incredibly hot-tempered, and he felt an incredible aura of blooming roses from her. At this time, Violetta was mentally rejoicing that the guard was horrified by her look. Now she looks more like Violetta. All that remains is for Yura to behave like Lily. Then everything will fall into place and the fairy kingdom will live happily ever after. Violetta ordered the maids to stay outside the door, even though they begged to go in. Violetta thinks that the maids are afraid that the princess will not be alone with her sister, but they have nothing to worry about because Hannah will be there. Shiki asked if Violetta really wanted to go alone. She assured him that everything would be fine and that she would go on her own. All the servants and other people are not allowed to be in this room because Violetta is making a good ending for the whole kingdom. Juri was waiting for Katori and asked where they would start. Katori began to list the things that needed to be done because there would be events in the near future that needed to be prepared for. Suddenly, Violet couldn't see where Hannah was. Lily calmly replied that the maid was dead. 
Violetta did not understand how the maid could have died, but Yuri kept saying no, arguing that she was not an important character. The princess pointed to the book and told the ghostwriter that this was more important, adding that her shadow sister needed to get to work. But Katori didn't want to change the subject. She stood firm and wanted to know exactly how Hannah died, what event led to her death. Lily clenched her fists in anger and ordered her to work on the problem instead of asking questions. Katori decided to defend her position and said that they have an equivalent contract. Violetta is the main villain and Lily is the main character. This contract is bilateral, and if Yuri wants to break it, she will never forgive her again. Lily did not think that Violetta would have rules as well. She had become harder to control since their last meeting. At the same time, Shiki was picking up a bouquet of flowers for the thief princess. But Majus warned that he had given this bouquet to Violetta. Shiki simply replied that he was not surprised. Majus replied that he had not come for that reason, but to see Violetta. He asked where she was. But Shiki quickly corrected Majus. He has no right to call the princess by her first name, only by adding Her Highness, or at least Mrs. Violetta. Magus said that he was the prince of the kingdom of night and ordered him to watch his tongue. But Shiki replied that he knew perfectly well who the prince of darkness was and that the fact did not change anything. The prince of darkness turned around and left, adding that if Violet wasn't here, then there was nothing for Magus to do. Shiki, out of anger, began to use magic to make the flowers fade faster. Meanwhile, Yuri changed the subject and said that she was tired, so they would have to continue tomorrow or the day after. Suddenly, the maid came up to the princess and asked for a moment of her attention. The girl wanted to go to her colleague's funeral if Violetta did not go. Although the farewell ceremony was always small, this time Princess Lily ordered a large-scale and solemn funeral. The maid said that she had heard that Violetta was not going to the funeral, so she decided to ask permission. Katori was very surprised because she had just heard about the funeral of the maid Hannah. She clenched her hands into a fist, wondering if Yuri had done something to the maid. Violetta said she would go to the funeral in person because she had to see everything with her own eyes. No one expected Hannah's death. It happened so suddenly that no one had time to realize anything. Lily was dressed in a black mourning dress and in tears, and the coffin with Hannah's body was carried by the other maids. The others at the funeral were gossiping among themselves. People asked each other who exactly had died, and after everyone found out that it was Lily's maid, they concluded that this maid was close to the princess's heart. Everyone talked about how kind Princess Lily was, while in reality, behind Lily's upset face was Jury's evil smile. The maids were very grateful to the princess for organizing such a solemn funeral, especially Hannah's mother. She was very grateful for all of this. Lily said with tears in her eyes that Hannah was a beautiful girl, like her little sister. The princess added that she had always wanted the maid to be there. Although Yuri's true self is taking over and she cannot play the role of a grieving princess so masterfully, she finds it all funny because she is so diligent in showing her grief, even though she does not even remember the face of the deceased. Lily added that fate had been cruel to Hannah, but she would always remain in everyone's hearts forever. Violetta and the maid were watching outside, and Katori knew that Jury was pretending. The princess thief said that Lily had already said goodbye, so it was their turn to come in. The girls came to the room, the maid introduced herself as Yumina, and said that she was also the maid of Princess Lily. And now she is the maid of Her Highness Violetta, Yumina added that they had come to lay flowers. The maids began to whisper among themselves that there were a lot of bad rumors about Violetta. They would like to throw her out, but they can't because she is a member of the royal family. Violetta knelt down. Everyone present was shocked because she was a person from the royal family on her knees. The girl regretted that she could not help her. She remembered how deliciously Hannah cooked and baked sweets because she loved them so much. She also made a wonderful tea to go with these delicacies, and she always thought of Lily. And when her little brothers couldn't sleep, Hannah would tell them fairy tales, and they would fall asleep to her gentle voice. Even when her father had back problems, she bought him a cart with her salary. 
Hannah was a very kind and innocent soul. Everyone around her did not know that Violetta knew so much about Hannah, and the mother of the late maid had tears running down her cheeks. Suddenly, Violetta saw the deceased's hand. It was covered with snake bites. Violetta realized that all this time Lily was just mocking the maid. Katori was disappointed. She blamed herself for everything. If she had talked to Lily earlier, this would not have happened. Suddenly, Yumina also saw snake bite marks. Violetta was frightened. It was not fashionable to let anyone know that Lily had killed Hannah. The princess thanked them for allowing her to lay flowers and quickly left with the maid. One of Hannah's brothers asked his mom if this princess was his sister's friend, because she seemed to love her very much. But the elders said it was impossible because it was Princess Violetta. How could she know all this? She doesn't look like the bad princess from the rumors. Meanwhile, Violetta was walking away very quickly, and the maid could not keep up with her and called after her. The princess wanted to run as far away as possible, but Yumina asked her directly if Hannah had been killed. The girl stopped and could barely hold back her tears. The princess had a choice. She could agree with you that the maid was murdered and that Violetta herself had killed her. Or she could change the subject to something else, saying that she was not talking nonsense. But this was not written into the game. Violetta was not supposed to have a choice menu, neither should Hannah's murders. The world is moving in a different direction, and the first bug they couldn't find has appeared. It's all strange, but she has to act like a thief. Violetta chose the paragraph where she confessed to killing Hannah. Suddenly, Lily comes running and asks to go with her to the Kingdom of Night. Even though Katori had told her a lot about the Kingdom of the Night, Yuri wanted to see everything with her own eyes. And Lily wants to seduce the Prince of Darkness, Magus, even more. The servant asked Magus to control his magic reserves because although he has unlimited potential and reserves, he should not put it all on his shoulders. The Prince of the Night replied that he had no wife to share his power, and only the prince and his wife have the right to use the magic of the night. He remembered the beautiful image of Violetta. He considers her the most beautiful girl in the world, and the only one in the whole world. During the journey of Majas and his servant, they did a lot of work, and the servant said that the prince had done a great job and that he could go home. But the prince was not in a hurry to go home, he had somewhere else to go. When he came to a curious ruined statue, he came closer. His companion asked him what was wrong, but he remained silent. The servant pulled out his sword and asked if there was anything dangerous. Magus picked a daisy and asked what kind of flower it was. He added that he wanted to make a bouquet of such flowers. The servant asked what the prince would do with the bouquet and suggested that he could put it in his room. The prince looked at the guy like he was an idiot. After all, it was logical. The bouquet of daisies was a diplomatic gift for Violetta. At this time, they were flying in the same area as the Prince of the Night. Violet told the setter that she could sit down and that Madge would be here any minute. And during this time, Lily can cool her feet in the water. The princesses asked the maid to wait for them. Violetta said that they should pretend that they were there by accident. After they meet on this shore, Magus will invite them to the Castle of the Night. The event of raising Magus's favor is about to begin. The Prince of the Night saw the girls on the shore but paid more attention to Violetta. The event of the accidental meeting began. Magus was embarrassed and looked away. The girl did not understand why, but suddenly the maid covered her legs. He apologized for seeing her feet. The maid explained to the boys that the princesses were tired on the road, so they gave their legs a rest. Suddenly, the prince's servant finally realized. The bouquet was for... Magus quickly interrupted the boy by grabbing him right by the face. Violetta joked that the boys communicated well with each other, but Jury was not happy. Magus seemed to completely ignore her. He never even looked in her direction. But Yura was excited by the prince's chaste behavior and wanted to seduce him even more. Especially since it would be a lot of fun because the Kingdom of Night is a country with a very developed branch of magic, which is all you need to fight Violetta and her magical artifacts. Lily sees that Magus is more interested in her sister than in her, but she will soon fix it. 
because she is the main character of this game. She went up and said hello to the prince. Magus was surprised, and she wondered if the prince had just noticed her. Lily's face couldn't hide her anger at Majes and looked like she was about to punch him. She was so energized that the air around her became heavier. Violetta decided to tell them the reason why they were on this shore, but Lily decided to interrupt her and tell her that her sister has no ability to use magic, so she protects herself with magical artifacts created for her by a man named Shiki. Madge mentioned the strange boy standing next to Violet. Lily added that she couldn't trust this Shiki, so she needed to find out if there was a way to let her sister use magic in the land of the night. Violetta doesn't understand what her sister is saying. She asks to give magic to the one about whom only bad things are said. It is strange that Yuri does not think about the consequences. She is the main character. Why should she draw attention to her? If Majes remembers who Violetta is, his level of affection for Lily will drop to zero. And he would definitely not invite them to the castle. But the prince replied that this was a good idea, and that he also had suggestions for the artifacts master. The thief princess wondered what exactly Majes wanted to tell her about him. But Majes said that he would invite the girls to discuss it in his castle. Everything turned out as Yuri had planned, although Katori did not fully understand everything. They went to the castle, and upon arrival, the Prince of the Night gave Violetta his hand. Juri saw that Majes was paying more attention to her sister, so she decided to tell her that it was the first time she had ever flown a dragon. But Katori was not surprised because her sister was lying in her usual style. Lily continued that one day she wants to fly again, but next time she wants to fly on Magus's dragon. She touched the dragon's jaw. This was not allowed because now the dragon would see her as an enemy. Katori told her sister that she was incorrigible, and she was very disappointed because Yuri did not remember the elements and details of the game, but nothing could be done. Violetta decided to make the dragon a little uncomfortable and apologized in advance. She touched his jaw, and at the same moment, a huge jet of fire shot straight at the princess, but she stood there as if nothing had happened. She turned to Lily and asked if her sister fully understood what would happen to her after that. Yuri didn't like it because it looked like Katori was showing off. Violetta was surprised that the dragon scale hairpin glowed. She had received this hairpin as a reward. It is a rather rare item in the fairy kingdom and can be obtained for a difficult event but here she got it so easily. The prince's subordinate praised Violetta for her courage and for taking such risks to protect her sister, and Majes agreed, adding that the girl never ceases to amaze him. After that, he called everyone to the castle. Violetta was distracted by her maid and asked to wait a moment. She added that her presence here was no longer necessary because the dragon scale hairpin was already the strongest defense while also being a beautiful accessory. She asked if the presence of a guard was necessary because the princess was already provided with the necessary protection and if she could leave her for a while. Violetta replied that the maid could leave her and not worry about anything. The maid added that Violetta was a strange person. She expected the princess to give her an evil look as she always did, but instead she gave her a sincere and warm smile that could melt any ice and heart. Violetta remembered her role and realized how hard it was to be a thief. The maid added that the princess was very different, like day and night. The girl tried to assure the servant that she was not and began to say that she was very angry. But this only made the maid laugh. She added that Violetta was very funny. But she agreed with the princess and added that in fact the princess was a terrible thief and gave her unfortunate maid some free time so that she could help her in her thievery later. Lily was already walking through the beautiful entrance to the castle of the Prince of the Night. There were beautiful lanterns and many interesting statues everywhere, and Mudge decided to ask her something. The princess replied that she was ready to answer any question. The Prince of the Night continued and asked about her sister's artifact maker, Mr. Shiki, and whether his artifacts had protected Violetta from his dragon's breath. Yuri was pleased because everything was going according to her plan. She said that she remembered how Magus had wanted to talk to her sister and had called her over. 
Violetta wanted to run up, but suddenly remembered that she was a thief and that she had to walk slowly because princesses don't like to rush. Jury added that they had gotten a little dirty on the way to the castle. Magus replied that he would give orders to have their dresses prepared for them. Lily thanked her sincerely and added that she was very happy. So she ran up to Violet and told her that the Prince of Darkness would prepare new dresses for them to replace their dirty ones. She grabbed her hand and called her to get dressed. 